So, we are discussing about uh, different you know water policy and then the different policies issues. Now, following this we come to another larger perspective that is national water policy. Now, if you see that the water allocation priority in India largely on drinking water, irrigation, uh, hydropower, ecology, agro industries, non-agriculture industries and navigation. So, these are the largely the areas on which the national water policy looked at very closely for water allocation in India. Now, let us see that NWP the national water policy. The water utilization and withdrawal rates for surface as well as groundwater should be rationalized giving due regard to the interest of small and marginal farmers. So, this particular point is very important because this group of farmers small and marginal farmers as you know that they do not have much resources neither do they have you know required a number of pumps to pump out the ground water for irrigation. So, these people basically you know need special attention and national water policy has rightly done so. Now, resource planning means water resource planning and recycling for providing maximum availability of water is another aspect that NWP looked at. NWP also give enough importance to the impact of water resources development projects on human settlement, livelihood and environment. It also has given enough importance to various guidelines for the safety of dams, storage reservoirs and other water related structures. National water policy also talked about the regulation with regard to groundwater exploitation. It also talks about setting water allocation priorities. It also envisaged establishing a standardized national information system with networking and databases. This is very important and at the present context digitization of the information on various natural resource base is very critical for efficient resource management. So, these are uh, certain aspect you know national water policy uh, already you know has given lot of importance. Now, often we hear about rainwater harvesting. It is needless to say that in India in many parts especially northeastern part huge amount of rainfall takes place within a very small span of time. And in the southern part and also in the western part of the country the amount of rainfall is relatively much less. So, it is important in both the places to restore to harvest the water. In one case we see that more than you know required amount of rainfall is taking place within a very short span of time and those waters are actually getting away from the system. We are not able to somehow you know hold that water in certain designated places so that when there is no rain that water can be utilized. Whereas, in other condition like you know in western part of India or uh, some part of northern India and southern India where rainfall is very less. So, there whatever amount of rainfall is taking place that has to be harvested. Rain water harvesting, rooftop water harvesting has become now one of the ways that people can actually harvest the rain water. So, rain water harvesting as you see from this uh, picture that rain whenever it comes we can actually collect and harvest them in various manner. We can also recharge our well, we can recharge our ground water. So, rooftop water harvest has also become a norm in some parts of the world and as well as some parts of our country where if you build a house or flat roof water harvesting is almost must. Runoff capturing for the local you know catchment area is another aspect where we actually lagging behind then uh, many other countries. So, we really need to utilize some proper technology suitable technologies to capture the you know runoff loss which we are getting. That water if you somehow can reduce the runoff or uh, stop it getting uh, lost from the system, 
we not only could preserve or conserve some water, but also can actually avoid losing the important minerals and topsoils of any particular location. Seasonal flood wave capturing from local streams is another aspect that you know helps in rainwater harvesting. So, how you can do it? I mean, it's pretty simple. You need to actually collect rainwater, store it, and then you can go for distribution. There are various ways. This particular diagram is, is one of the potential ways that uh, we can actually harvest the rainwater, you know, whichever is falling on the rooftop of our houses. We can basically use a pipe and through a filter, if we pass it, we can straight away store in the tank. From there, we can also pass it onto the groundwater for recharging groundwater and recharge well. So, see, there are already some existing knowledge and we need to actually apply that uh, for the betterment of water resource management. Now, what are the uh, benefits that we could actually achieve if we go for water harvesting? Many. There are many fold of benefits. You not only get good quality of fresh water, it also improves the groundwater quality. I just, you know, in a previous slide I have explained that it could recharge the groundwater. It decreases the groundwater pumping cost because it requires, you know, some source of energy, electricity, self-sufficient water supply for drinking, irrigation and domestic purposes in another, you know, benefit that you can achieve. Rooftop rainwater harvesting can be adopted by individuals. Uh, as I just said that in some parts of our country, rooftop harvesting has become a norm. If you go for you know, building a flat or, or a house, it is easy, it is less expensive in construction and also it is, you know, operational cost is also relatively less. Reduction of soil erosion and sediment ill, that is another benefit that we can get out of water harvesting. Salt water intrusion prevention in the coastal aquifers due to you know maintenance of balance between fresh and saline water is another aspect which because of groundwater recharge we can actually take care of that particular issue. Hilly terrains you know sometime also has its own problem but if we go for water harvesting the hilly terrains naturally undulated topography it helps in the creation of water harvesting structures almost naturally. So, that also we can somehow utilize for water harvesting, utilizing that natural topography of hill terrain. In case of islands, again rainwater harvesting would provide necessary, you know, fresh water for anthropogenic use means uh, for the use of human being as a freshwater aquifers are almost, uh, you know, getting very limited day by day. Desert areas water harvesting definitely would provide the essential source of water for livelihood. Remember that if we can harvest water and if we can conserve the water, then at least one extra season of you know vegetables or grains we can grow. So, one uh, dry season if you can provide with the preserved water, then definitely the income of the farmers can be almost doubled. Otherwise, because you see he will be keeping his land almost empty because of lack of rain or lack of water. So, that is one straight away you know benefit uh, that if you have preserved your uh, water during whatever rain that you have got. So, that will help during the dry season to take one extra cup. That means extra income. I have been now uh, mentioning, you know, in the last uh, couple of minutes or also few slides back that soil erosion through water, through wind is one of the major issues that we confront today. So, if we want to protect our topsoil and then avoid losing our soil productivity and thus brand production or total yield, we need to somehow manage our soil. We need to protect our soil from erosions. Now, one of the major reason of soil erosion is that you know the velocity of water the along the slope. So, the stream flow. So, great amount of you know runoff takes place due to uh, steep slope as well as uh, not having some kind of you know hurdles or some kind of restriction to the 
continuous flow of water across the slope. We can have various type of measures to reduce the pace of the water flow across the slope. We will talk about those techniques, uh, how we can do that. So, river bank erosion is uh, one of the major issues that in many parts of our country, even in, in Brahmaputra river basin is one of the major issues. So, there are lot of reasons for that why this thing is happening, but instead of you know pondering too much on the reasons of this problem, I think that we need to find out uh, some solutions and to reduce the river bank erosion, it can actually help also the sustainable management of the water resources as well as fish, aquatic life and other you know associated organisms. Sediment yield is another issue that we need to take care of by you know utilizing different kind of uh, hydrologic models uh, with uh, GIS interfaces like SWAT, WEB. People are actually analyzing you know the extent of sediment yield and also are trying to find out that what could be the potential way to reduce this sediment yield. So, there are some you know practical techniques that we have with us which can be utilized for soil erosion you know control and some of them I will just you know mention or share with you. Sediment traps. So, as you see in this picture that uh, this is a sediment trap, the water is actually flowing and the sediment basically will be trapped and that will be stopped going out of the system. Because if you can trap that sediment, basically that will also enrich that particular area, the nutrient and other constituents of that sediment will not go uh, along with water out of the system. So, there are various type of uh, sediment traps that you can see. So, here one is a very common which probably uh, many of you might be seeing in university or institution campuses uh, when you go through the road on the side of the road you will find this kind of uh, you know sediment traps are there. So, basically as you see in this uh, particular figure that this is uh, a kind of a inlet through which you know the water are actually trying to come in inside the dikes and then when it uh, you know flows above this particular inlet then the water will come and it will get deposited here and this is called the deposited basins. Now, once uh, the water along with you know other constituents are here, then there is a open check dam has been created. The water will flow come from here, then uh, some of the deposits will remain here and the next step there is another counter check dam has been created. So, some parts of the constituent which come through this particular outlet. So, those again constituents will get for the second time get deposit here. So, in a sense what we are trying to do is that step wise kind of you know trapping of uh, sediments. So, that we can actually somehow reduce the loss of sediment from the system to go out of the system. So, this is important for various region and uh, soil erosion can also be regulated at least if not can be totally avoided by vegetative measures. Now, this kind of pictures is very common in any Indian villages, we call it grassed waterways. So, here what happen is that when you put this kind of grass cover on the side line of the waterways, the chances of soil loss actually is almost minimum. It also at the same time maintain the flow of runoff water in almost in a non-erosive velocity, relatively slow steady you know velocity. The shape is largely triangular and trapezoidal or parabolic depending upon the soil type stability. Bed slope is you know most of the cases is uh, less than uh, 10 percent. So, these are some vegetative measures and vetiver grass actually in this aspect could be a very very important agent to reduce the soil erosion, to restore you know the soil quality and to also make the soil you know steady. So, uh, vetiver grass 
can be also used as a biological mitigation for soil erosion, soil loss. Joycea grass is also sometimes used and reed grass are also sometimes used for stopping or regulating or reducing the erosion of soil. So, these are all vegetative measures which uh, can be utilized to control soil erosion in any watershed. Now, let us see the some other also uh, techniques. Now, land grading and land leavening is another approach which often is used uh, in many places. Then comes another popular technology is mulching. Mulching can be of various types, plastic mulching which you see here. But you can also mulch your soil with leaf, you know, leaf litters which actually cover the soil at the same time over a period of time can be the source of organic matter under microbial degradation. Obviously, this is the you know easiest way of reducing soil erosion, reforestation and tree plantation. Then retaining of existing vegetation, you know that sometime it happens that we try to you know go for reforestation and tree plantation in one side, but on the other side we continue chopping down uh, the trees. So, retaining of existing vegetation itself could be one way of uh, reducing you know soil loss, soil erosion. Roadside gutters, this is a very kind of common picture in any kind of highway that you can see. So, the roadside gutters something with vegetative cover on the side sometime also help uh, reducing you know the soil loss, unwanted soil loss from some part of the area or particular site. Now, soil erosion there are different measures already I have discussed some of them. So, if you see that in a particular watershed, this is suppose a watershed where you have on the left hand side a kind of a hilly terrain where uh, slope is relatively higher and uh, runoff is taking place. Then you have a kind of a dike system here and in between uh, this you have a kind of a you know channel type of formation through which the water which is coming uh, through this slope can be actually channelized to the direction that uh, you know you want. This is the plain field. So, if this water which is coming from the slope can be channelized and put uh, wherever actually we need water for irrigation or for growing plants and crops, we can actually divert that particular run of water for some other uses. Hill slope cultivation, see there is another very nice way that often visible in the hilly terrain is that you dig uh, along the slope in one place and take out the soil and deposit on the top. So, what happens is that you continue doing that along the slope. What it does if your slope is in this direction, along the water, along with water or wind, the soil will come. First, it will get you know somehow will try to get deposited here in this ditch that you have made and then even after that if it tries to go, then it gets somehow get resisted by this heap of soil that you have put taking out of this ditch. So, again if from here any soil tries to go off you know along the slope, then it what happen is that before it goes away from this particular point, it will come here and get deposited by those eroded soil from the upper area. And then once it is filled up, then you can again put a plant here and you can grow it there. So, this is the way that you can create a trench and then grow a plant and the soil which comes out from the trench, it can be used as a bund. So, this is a some kind of trenching system which are often used in the hilly region and it found very effective for reducing soil erosion. Apart from that, there are certain you know technologies which often are used utilizing machines like summer plowing is one option that uh, many a times uh, we do it for reducing the erosion and this summer plowing actually helps to reduce the free flowing of topsoil along the you know water or wind from the particular field site. Contour bonding is another very uh, popular one. It is across the contour as you see here that this kind of bonding it goes. So, if water from top tries to come up definitely in every contour bond it get registered and definitely 
the speed of its flow will get reduced significantly and thus the erosion will be also less. Contour and staggered terracing is a, another very nice way of doing. You see it in Philippines and some parts of other country in Southeast Asia. So, this uh, contour and staggered terracing also helps because if they are not here, then water will simply just flow and take away the topsoil. Because of this uh, staggered terrace, the water get registered, the flow of water get registered and also deposition of sediment takes place. Deep ploughing or contour ploughing is another uh, way of reducing soil erosion because here the wind or water coming from this side will definitely get registered by you know when you do go for deep ploughing and contour ploughing. So, it will not have a free flow from out of the system. The soil will be stopped to go away of the system or at least the speed of the wind and the water will be reduced significantly. Bench terracing is another uh, way it looks like a bench as you see here. So, this also is kind of if the water flows from the top definitely the speed of water will get significantly reduced and so the soil loss. Contour stone wall very common and very popular you will see in many parts of our country including eastern part of our country, southern part of our country and even Madhya Pradesh I have seen this kind of contour stone, stone walls that people try to do. So, this is a very economic way utilizing the resources available there in the particular location. One can go for contour stone wall which can reduce again the speed of flow of water and thus reduce the amount of soil loss, reduce the soil erosion in the system. Mm -hmm.